Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel today. I'm going to use a buzzword here, I'm going to get a little bit vulnerable with you. Um, so I'm going to be talking about, I wouldn't call them regrets exactly, but these are things that I've done in the past and that I am not intending to do again. The only reason I don't call them regrets is because I've learned from them and I wouldn't have learned had I not done them. So I'm not gonna regret doing them. What I've done, I've done. You can't go back and change it. You can just learn and try to be better. So that's what I am doing here. So I am a human being and therefore fundamentally flawed, as are all human beings. No one's perfect. And I'm just gonna get really real with you about some things that I have done as a fragrance reviewer that I now realize wasn't uh, great for me. So I am not judging anyone who does or has done these things because I've done them myself. And uh, yeah, definitely not in judgment of anyone here, but I just thought I would go into some things that, um, yeah, just uh, kind of regrets kind of regrets we'll call it that so um let's have a sip of my coffee um, last night scent of the night i went to the christmas party it's why i'm probably a little rough around the edges today i uh, went to the christmas party and i chose hera from papillon absolutely stunning white floral with a gorgeous really noticeable iris and then a lovely powdery, a slightly sweet, Chypre-esque dry down. Absolutely love Hera. And I smelt amazing. So let's get on with my confessions then. So one, um, one thing that I've done, um, and I think I've done this probably a few times, is using other bigger youtubers names to get views and i did that and one example was uh, jeremy fragrance when he was launching his new fragrance um office and i made a video with the title uh, something like 10 reasons not to buy jeremy's fragrance something like that and if you actually watch the video it's not all hateful i was fairly pleasant about jeremy but still anyone that had just seen the title and the thumbnail would have thought it was a hate video and of course that was clickbait and it got me a lot of views it also got me some troll comments some hate comments which when you put out something really controversial you absolutely will get some shit for it and you have to expect it and i absolutely am not complaining about that because yeah i, I kind of deserved it i made myself a target the, the thing is I just don't think it was a particularly good look. Yeah, it got me some views, but it probably made me like five pounds or something, you know? <laughs> it's, was it really worth it? Um, I just think, you know, I bumped into Jeremy after that and he was perfectly lovely, he gave me a hug. Um, I bumped into him the, uh, at the first Essence that I went to going back now a few years and he was perfectly lovely with me, but to be fair, it would, it would be completely justified for him to be pissed off with me. And um, yeah, I used someone else's name to get views. It worked, but I won't be doing it again. That's just my personal preference. So I've got one here that, <laughs> that you wouldn't, that no one would know about. But I thought I'm, I'm going to confess because I kind of feel um, well. It's done. It, you know, it's something I did, and it means nothing. And you know, <laughs> okay, let's get on with it. Um, so again, it comes off of, of trying to use someone else. And I don't think I, I wasn't very self-aware in this moment of what, that I was doing that. But I actually reached out to someone, I'm not going to name them. I reached out to someone um, who was very successful on YouTube once upon a time and had gone away. And um, there was rumours that she might be coming back. A lot of you may well know who I'm talking about. And for some reason I took it upon myself to contact to try and contact her and, and encourage her to come back to YouTube and also offer to help with um, uh, the technical stuff, which is ridiculous because I'm hardly the best editor or whatever in the world anyway. And at the time I thought I was being 
helpful. I thought I was being nice. But really, if I dig a little deeper, I think I was hoping that, you know, that might help me in some way, that I would get something out of it. So that's really like, it's cringy to admit that, but I've learned from it. So, you know, I've put it behind me now. <laughs> if I found myself reaching out to someone, um, I think I'm going to question it first. What's my real, like, true, true reason for doing this? And another thing that I used to do was ask for samples. Um, going back a long time now, I would get in touch, not all the time, but I'd get, if something really interested me, I would sometimes uh, reach out to a brand and ask for samples. Never asked for full bottles, but I did ask for samples on occasion. And I used to just word it, is there any chance you could send me some samples I could review on my YouTube channel or my Instagram, whatever. And um, this really backfired on me last, was it last year or the year before? Oh, I'm not sure now. <laughs> um, I think it was last year. Uh, it was when I was really ill. I was getting ill. So yeah, everything happened at once. It was a very terrible time. Um, then Sweetie died, so yeah. Um, God, <laughs> now I'm getting emotional. Like, what? where the hell did that come from? Let's take a sip of coffee and calm down. Ah, right. It really is confession time. Actually getting some water in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, so what happened was I reached out to this brand. I'd seen an uh, influencer sort of raving about their perfumes and they didn't actually sell samples, so there was no way to sample their perfumes. They, they obviously just expected people to blind buy. And I got in touch and said I'd love to... Uh, if do you have samples I could try? I'd like to review them, and I, this I know this is not something I do now, but even if I did um, do it, I wouldn't do it in this way because I've basically said I will review them. I've now confirmed I will review these fragrances no matter what, and that's turned out to be a bad mistake. So this brand, I'm not going to name them, but if you think of the word unfair. And then you think of what the opposite of that might be and imagine it's it's kind of an ironic <laughs> it's kind of an ironically named brand so yeah i got in touch with these people and they agreed to send me some samples and when they arrived uh, i tried them i tried one of them and i thought it smelled okay quite nice i think i tried it on a live stream and then I was I was advised by someone that they're all clones, they're basically all clones. And then when I smelt that fragrance again that I'd smelt in the live stream, I realised it did smell like Aventus. I just hadn't it hadn't clicked in my mind. Then I started to do some digging because this brand had made up this massively ridiculous historical story. And it was all you could like when I looked into it, I just thought, why the hell did I get in touch with this brand? I mean, you can tell, you could smell the bullshit as soon as you click on their website and then, you know, all the reviews, the reviews all kind of sounded the same. They were trying to push the same points at how long lasting it they are. And, you know, it was just so blatantly obvious that these weren't genuine reviews and they even had fake reviews on Fragrantica. And I was like, now what am I going to do? Like I've asked for samples. I should have done what I should have done is get in touch with them and say, look, these aren't for me. Thanks for the samples, but I won't be doing a review. That's what I should have done. Unfortunately, I got a bee in my bonnet. I just smelt this bullshit and I just, I went with uh, reviewing, <laughs> with reviewing the fragrances and I was honest. And I also shared some of the information I'd found out from digging about this brand who said they were French when they weren't. Long story short, they threatened to sue me and uh, because they didn't like what I said, they they told me to take that video down now. And they looked up my house, yeah, they, you can do this, um, you pay about 25 pounds or something, you can look up who owns a property. They obviously had my address. They looked up the, uh, and, and told me who my mortgage company was and that they would be putting a charge on my house if I didn't take that video down. So then I went and did a live stream <laughs> saying sued for a review. Then of course that got a lot of attention and it made the video that I'd done um, get a lot more views when it had only had about 200. So all of a sudden everyone wants to know, of course, what's this all about? 
So um, it just got them a lot of, um, I get negative attention. Yeah, so basically I got myself in a lot of hot water there because they actually did eventually send a solicitor's letter accusing me of defamation. And at that point I was suffering with various ailments that I didn't know what was wrong with me. And it was stressful and I, it wasn't worth it. So I did take those videos down, uh, but I learned a lot. I definitely learned a lot from that situation. And uh, yeah, I don't ask brands for samples for review. If a brand doesn't sell samples, if there's no way to test the fragrances, I might reach out and ask them, how can I buy samples? But I don't say, I, I will never say I will review something. That's what I've learned there. And um, I'd like to say, actually, while I'm on this topic, I got so much support when I was going through that situation. And off the top of my head, I, I'd like to, I'd like to thank, sounds like an Oscar speech now, I'd like to thank Liz Moores. She was so supportive throughout that whole situation. Cherie, over on the top note, she was amazingly helpful. Loads and loads of fragrance reviewers were so supportive. Patsy, Facebook friend, really, really supportive. And, oh God, I'm forgetting people now, but I, I got so much support throughout that situation. And, you know, I just want to send my love to all those people that supported me because, it, yeah, it was horrible. Another one that I used to do, something that I used to do a lot, well, going back quite a while now, I used to swear a lot on my channel. And I think I thought I was being a bit cool and edgy for a fragrance reviewer. And actually, no, it was too much. It's like, what is the point in swearing all the time? It loses its effect. So yes, I will occasionally swear, but it's for a reason. If I swear, you know that I'm really emphasizing the emotion or whatever that I'm feeling. Otherwise, if you swear all the time, it means nothing. It's like when people say I love you all day long to, um, to their loved ones. It's like, it doesn't really mean that much anymore it's like you're just saying it all the time it's a habit whereas if you know if you don't say it all the time and then you just look at the person that you love and say i love you and that means something because you you're thinking it and you're not just automatically saying it and it's the same with swearing if you're just constantly effing and jeffing you know it just means nothing it just means you've got a potty mouth <laughs> and um, yeah i can have a potty mouth especially with a few drinks inside me but I need to rein that in. And uh, yeah, I don't really do that much swearing anymore on YouTube. Another regret, regrets. I have a few, is that the line? I'll keep thinking, of that. what is that line from? Is it New York? No, it's not New York. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, um, really, what is wrong with me today? Uh, another regret I have was, you know, not a regret because I learned from it, is buying a load of cheap fragrances I, i've gone through stages of buying a lot of cheap fragrances or cheaper affordable ish perfumes because they're getting a bit of hype on youtube it's like everyone's uh, talking about them and they're not that expensive so i may as well buy them and it's like what's the point I'm, I'm, and i'm kind of like buying them for the channel what's going on with my hair look at that um, i'm buying them for the channel really to talk about I know I'm not gonna, I'm, you know, highly unlikely to fall in love with them. But yeah, just buying a load of affordable fragrances to talk about on the channel, no, I'm not doing that anymore. I did it really badly in the pandemic and I learned from that. So everyone was buying a lot of stuff in the pandemic, you know, not just fragrance lovers, but everyone. Because I, um, I remember my car was broke and I was waiting for recovery. And so I'm standing at sort of like the bottom of my road. So I've got the view of my road and the road that crosses here. And I stood waiting for recovery for maybe 45 minutes or so. And the amount, <laughs> amount, I don't know why I did it like that. The amount, the amount of deliveries that were coming all around, like in both roads, just in that 45 minutes. I mean, there was a postman, yeah, normal. But then there was uh, delivery vans turning up all these different times to these different properties, like people were just getting delivered to um, en masse. It was so funny to just stand there in that, you know, in that moment and just keep seeing deliveries turning up for all my neighbors. It's like, everyone's just mass 
en masse ordering shit online because it can't do nothing else. But yeah, I did that in the pandemic. I had a whole ton of fragrances in the summer and I pretty much sold all of them in the end. So yeah, I mean, I did. In, there were some that I really did enjoy. I remember my, my whole Legs Akimbo, the, the Scandal one. I did really enjoy that and I got through a fair bit of it. But in the end, it, I stopped wearing it and I got rid of that as well. I bought a lot and it was pointless, <laughs> really. Yeah, it was, it was video fodder, but really, did I need to do that? Now I'm going to talk about clones because not so much on my channel, but on uh, when I used to go go and do videos with Dan on Dan's channel, Mr. Smelly, I did review and sort of have opinions on quite a lot of clones that he would have me smell. And it's not really, I don't think it's really a regret so much, but it's like, I guess not really that interested and so I'm not that bothered about clones I'm probably not going to talk about them too much although I, I still always recommend there's one from Fragrenza it's their Lost Cherry dupe and it is exceptional so I do I still highly um, recommend that one they sent that to me for free and um, it is an exceptionally good long-lasting rich almond cherry vanilla quite similar to Tom Ford's Lost Cherry but I feel like richer retains its density whereas on my skin anyway Lost Cherry would have this lovely richness to start with and then it fell a bit flat like um just kind of felt a bit reedy I don't know it's hard to explain but it just wasn't very full-bodied on my skin another clone house so going back to what I was saying, how I now communicate with uh, fragrance brands, if I am going to communicate with fragrance brands, um, another clone house got in. Uh, clone houses do get in touch a lot, like low, like small UK based clone houses will get in touch and um, and want you to you know, want to send you stuff to talk about on your channel, and I tend to ignore them. And then a company got in touch with me called Dialect Fragrances. And um, I think I ignored their emails uh, once or twice. And then, um, and I don't know, curiosity got the better of me and I looked at their website. And actually I was so impressed with what they were saying on their website that I did agree to have a fragrance sent to me. I sound like, I sound so entitled. I will allow you to send me a free fragrance. But I was really harsh with them and I said, I will not guarantee that I will talk about it at all. You've got no guarantee of a review. I'm really fussy. I don't like a lot of aroma chemicals that generally I know clone houses do fill their fragrances with. And I said, and if I do decide to talk about it, I will be 100% honest. And if I don't like it, I will say so. And I thought they were gonna run away and hide. I really did. I, I did not think they would have the balls to send me anything. <laughs> And I have to give them props, but they said, no, that's all fine. We will send you a fragrance. And, um, and, and they did. And the reason I agreed to it was because of on their website. They're, so they're vegan, they're cruelty free, they're trying to be as sustainable as they can, eco, all of, you know, all of that stuff. And they're not spilling out bullshit. A lot, of, a lot of these clone houses will say, we use the very best materials. They're not saying that because I hate it when people say that. It's bullshit. Um, but they, they do say that the fragrances are made in France and uh, that they use, uh, you know, good uh, techniques and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, so I did, um, on this occasion, I did uh, receive a fragrance. I'm going to show it to you. So they use this um, very plain packaging. So obviously it's recyclable and it says on here that it's carbon neutral. And yeah, I, I decided to do this also because they're vegan cruelty free and I do have a few friends and people that follow me that only uh, entertain fragrances that are vegan and cruelty free. So this one's called Tobacco Opulence and I'm going to spray it on the card. It is a clone of Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille. I did do a side by side with a sample that I had and I wouldn't say it's spot on but it's fairly close especially when you first smell it it's got that rich it literally smells like sort of like pipe tobacco but fruity spicy so yeah it's got vanilla tobacco spices and cinnamon is the listed notes and 
it's pretty good. It's I, I don't pick up on any of those scratchy aroma chemicals that I would expect to be in clone fragrances. So if you are in the market for a clone, I'd say check them out. They're UK based. They've got some deals on their website at the moment. But my thoughts on clones are, I don't mind clone houses copying fragrances that are ridiculously expensive. I don't mind them giving you the opportunity to smell like your favorite perfume if you don't have the budget for it. I don't, I don't mind that. As long as clone houses don't come after the, the indies, the small brands, because that's just not fair. But when it comes to Chanel, Tom Ford, they're not really losing anything because I think if you can, if you are gonna buy Chanel, you're gonna buy Chanel, you know? If you just want to smell a bit like your favorite Chanel perfume and, and you're happy with the clone, it's like, you know, people with uh, fake handbags, they were probably never going to buy the real thing. So, you know, I know it's, it's there's going to be people that disagree with that, um, but that's just my opinion. So I am okay with clone brands, but I'm not that, I'm not that interested in them as well. You know, that if I want, if I want something, I was, you know, if it's too expensive, then I either don't have it or I buy a decant of it or I save up. That's just my personal, personal preference as a, you know, someone who's really into fragrances and has been for over 10 years. But if I was 22 on my shitty office wages, I would be all over clones, I reckon. So there you go. So that's dialect. And they've also sent me a sample of their Baccarat Rouge copy. Amber Infusion. So I think I might have sprayed it once before, but it was a long time ago. Yes, yeah, I mean, from first sniff, absolutely smells exactly like Baccarat Rouge. I can't tell you how that changes and develops, but um, it's pretty damn good for the opening, the notes, opening notes, yeah. Okay, that, that's uh, clones covered. And then my final one is just... Um, I think I'm a bit of a dick sometimes and I have corrected fragrance friends on their pronunciation of certain words like bergamot for example um, some people pronounce pronounce it differently we'll say I'm not going to get into it and I, yeah I was a bit of a dick and, um, and I sort of corrected them and it's like looking back who the fuck am I oh yeah, there goes one of those swear words who the hell am I to tell you how to pronounce something I pronounce things wrong all the time. I get things wrong all the time. So that's something else. It's just a small one. We're ending on a, on a slightly um, lighter note. <laughs> just a little one there. Yeah, so that's, that's my confessions. And uh, let me know, do you have any confessions, whether you are a fragrance collector or if maybe you're uh, someone who puts content out on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, do you have any confessions or regrets that you'd like to share? We can have a little confessional in the comments or you can confess something else that's completely irrelevant if you want. I mean, just get it. It's good to get it off your chest and call it our little, um, yeah, our little confessional corner. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.